Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Venus and today I am doing a book haul video. I have been going a little crazy the last couple months, especially this month because October is my birthday month. So I've been overindulging, we'll say. I know you guys won't judge me, hopefully not, but I am a collector of books. So I've been buying a lot of books. Uh, I always do my book hauls by genre because I do read multiple genres and I don't go into a lot of detail about these books because obviously I don't know that much about them. So let's just get started. We're going to start with middle grade. So I had to get Vanicula in a box because I read the first book, Vanicula, obviously many, many, well, I read all of these books many, many years ago, super nostalgic for me, but I reread Vanicula during old school April, uh, which is an awesome readathon. Just so you know, watchathon, readathon, activityathon. But I read Vanicula, actually listened to the audiobook. It was so funny, and I forgot how much I loved these books. Um, it's about a bunny who um, is brought home to this family, and the crazy dog and cat, uh, mostly the cat, is determined to prove that Vanicula is a vampire. And it's crazy shenanigans that happen, and I can't wait to reread re the rest of the books in the series. So I just, I had to have this on my shelf for purely nostalgic reasons, but they're also just great, great books. Next middle grade, this book caught my eye in Barnes & Noble. This is called Impossible Creatures. It's a fantasy middle grade, and I was just absolutely enamored by this cover and the colors on the cover. It's just so pretty. Uh, the back says, it was a very fine day until something tried to eat him. And I did, so when I go to Barnes & Noble, I do check Goodreads before I buy books uh, to check the ratings. And this one actually has very high ratings. And it's the first book in a series. And I am so excited to find a series, a middle grade series that I can just fall in love with. And I'm hoping that this is the one. So we'll see. Next up is Ravenfall. I actually talked about this in my fall TBR book. This is an, another middle grade. And this one I think is about a, a family that owns a magical B&B &B between the human world and the other world. This one I have not read yet, but I do plan on reading this soon for fall. I just love the cover of this also, and I'm very excited to see what this one is about. I don't know if this is a series or not. Yes, it is a series. It looks like the second book is called Hollow Thorn. And this is also a middle grade fantasy. And then another middle grade fantasy is the mystery. This is more like mystery, I would say. Um, well, I guess with a little bit of fantasy. But this is A Mystery of Black Hollow Lane. And this is by Julia Noble. And I did read this actually in September. So if you want to hear my thoughts about it, you can check out the September wrap up that I will link down below. But overall, I enjoyed it. It was 3.5. This is a mystery about a secret society in a boarding school in London. And then my last middle grade is Harry Potter. Um, I just had to get this. This is a new edition. It has these cute sprayed edges with uh, snitches on snitches. Oh my God, it's been so long. Pretty sure they're snitches. <laughs> uh, I, I just lost my Harry Potter card, but uh, <laughs> I just love these sprayed edges on this. And I don't have Harry Potter in paperback, so I'm hoping that the rest of the books come out like this too because I will definitely collect them. So that's it for middle grade. Next up is going to be literary fiction. I just have a couple of those. Don't read a lot of those but when I'm in the mood for a good literary fiction which typically will make me cry, I like to have some available. And the first one is going to be Intermezzo by Sally Rooney. I have not read any of her books but I've heard about this author very much. I know that this caught my eye because it says an exquisitely moving story about grief, love, and family, but especially love from the global phenomenon, Sally Ro Rooney. And it's about brothers that live in, in, no, excuse me, Ireland. And I think, yeah, it says, aside from the fact that they are brothers, Peter and Ivan Kubek seem to have little in common. Peter is a Dublin lawyer in his 30s, successful, competent, and apparently unassailable. In the wake of their father's death, he's medicating himself to sleep and struggling to manage his relationships with two very different women, his enduring first love, Sylvia, and Naomi, a college student for whom his for whom life is one long joke. I don't, I don't know what that's about. And then it talks about the other brother, but yeah, I'm excited to read this. I love reading uh, literary fiction books that revolve around family and when they have like a lot of struggles within the family. Personally, I'm from a dysfunctional family. So 
for some reason I like to read about that. The last literary fiction book that I picked up was purely because of a fellow booktuber that I absolutely adore. I'm getting ready to gas her up, but it's Allie from All I Do Is Read. If you are not following her, please check out her channel. She will literally make you smile every single video she puts out, and she has the best reading vlogs and ideas even if they're books that I've never heard of that she's reading, I will stop and watch her vlogs because they are so good. But uh, one of those vlogs, she read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. And her reaction to this book, I just had to pick it up. So I can't remember what it's about. <laughs> I just remember she enjoyed it. Sounded like it was a little bit emotional. And like I said, when I want to get emotional, I usually tend to grab literary fiction. So hopefully I will love this. This book has been out for a while. I actually refused to read it because it was so overhyped and I was afraid that I would not like it, but we're hoping that I enjoy this one and it becomes an all-time favorite. And then my daughter wanted me to read Frankenstein along with her because she had to read it for her senior literary fiction or English class that she's in. And so I grabbed the same exact copy that she had. She actually finished it and I didn't start it. <laughs> I wasn't in the mood for it, but I need to get Back into reading classics, I've never read Frankenstein. So hopefully I will one day actually get to this and we can have a discussion about it. Next up is Rewitched by Lucy Jane Wood. I thought this cover was so cute and I thought it would be a great fall read. Hoping to get to this one soon. Don't know anything about it. It's about a witch. I think this has a lot of like self-love and self-discovery in it. And yeah, that's all I need to know. So I really loved this cover. Yeah, the colors on this cover are just so inviting to me. So uh, another book I can't wait to read for fall. And then I think this is the only romance. Yeah, this is the only romance that I have um, in this haul, which is pretty surprising, but the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore, and this is by Lori Gil Gilmore, excuse me. I did read this for September, so you can check out my thoughts on it. I gave it 3.5. It's part of the Dream Harbor series. The first book is the Pumpkin Spice Cafe, which I think I also gave like a 3 or 3.5. These are just fun, seasonal romance, small town romances, and I mean... Really not much else to say about it, but overall I enjoyed it. Then I have a couple of thrillers. The first one is We Used to Live Here by Marcus Clywer. I, I guess this is like thriller, horror-ish. And I actually did read this recently. Actually this week, I finished it this week. I tabbed it like crazy. I'm not even gonna say anything about my thoughts on this, but I read it. I did, yeah, I did. And um, it was a journey. We are following a couple that have bought a house that is kind of in this secluded area. And while this woman's partner is away at work, this family of five knock on her door and say that, and the father says that he used to live there and he wants to show his family where he used to live. Why this woman allowed these people to come in her house is for a whole nother discussion, but yeah, so this is part of my haul. Can't wait to talk about this in my October wrap-up. And, and then another thriller, the last one at the wedding. This is by Jason Reculak, who wrote um, Hidden Pictures, which I really, really enjoyed. I don't know anything about this. I don't want to. I just want to go into it completely blind. But I'm very excited. I hope he becomes a new favorite author of mine. I hope this is a win for me when I read it. I'm actually planning on reading that this starting this this week. So hoping that this is at least a four-star read. And now we're getting, so horror and fantasy are the, the genres that I have the most books in. So we're going to start with horror. First up is William by Mason Coyle. This is like a sci-fi horror. I actually read this, I finished this, I think, yesterday. So I'm not going to give my review, but this is a very interesting book about a robot named William and artificial intelligence and the main character has agoraphobia so he doesn't leave the house he has a lot of anxiety and that's all i'm gonna say but yeah very excited to talk about this in my october wrap-up as well next horror book is wet bones by john shirley this is a book that i thrifted i saw christina from christina brown her channel she, best horror book recommendations and fun vlogs as well definitely check out her channel but this is a body horror book that I think is also about addiction. It just says, Into a Southern California Ripe with the Machinations, hope I'm saying that right, of Hollywood. 
more of drugs and the slick sheen of sex comes a nameless ancient evil, a destroyer that completely ravages its victim's body and soul, leaving behind only wet bones. And that just sounds so good. I don't know what these little brown marks are. If you can see that, I don't think it's going to focus on it. Um, I don't know what they are. I'm hoping it doesn't look like anything's crawling in here. This is definitely an old book. <laughs> Let me see. What year did this come out? I don't know. These little brown spots are kind of freaking me out. 1999. Hopefully it's not mold. We'll have to Google what that is. But actually there's something sticky on here. This just needs to be de disinfected. We're, we're done with this one for now. Another book that I thrifted, uh, Richard Lehman. I've talked about him quite a few times this year, but this is Savage, supposedly one of his best books that I was also talked about in my fall TBR. So I do want to read this soon. This takes place in November of nine, excuse me, 1888. Jack the Ripper, I believe, is involved in this. And that's all I that's all I know. Richard Lehman can be a very divisive author. So this is probably the last book that I'll read by him if or the last chance I'll give this author. If I don't like this one, then I'm done. But I'm hoping that I enjoy this. And then another book that I thrifted is Dean Koontz. I was thinking one day that I really, really wanted to read some Dean Koontz books. I remember reading, I think it was Intense, Intensity or something like that about a um, home invasion. And I remember that being, that book being very intense. <laughs> um, so I want to read more of his books. And I just looked on Goodreads to check to see what his highest rated, highest rated books were. And this was one of them. Also, I didn't realize he had a lot of series too. But uh, so this is one of his higher rated books. I don't know anything about it. It's got a dog on the cover and that's enough for me. And I know he's horror. So looking forward to reading this. If you read this because it's an older book, let me know. Is it worth the high ratings that I saw on Goodreads? Uh, hopefully it is. Then we have Come With Me by Ronald Malfi. Quickly becoming a favorite book, uh, oh, excuse me, a favorite author of mine. I talked about one of his other books that I read in my September wrap-up. So this will be my second book by him. Very, very excited to read this one. I don't remember what this is about. It takes place in December. I talked about it in my fall TBR, but he's a horror author. And so far, I'm really enjoying his writing. Back blurbs just say, truly chilling and suspenseful, yet also hauntingly nuanced. I read it in a single day. It's that damn good. That's blurbed by Richard Chismar and chimes with rare beauty and page turning brilliance. Can't wait to get to this one. And then another book by Ronald Malfi. This is called December Park. This is one of his higher rated books. So I figured I would also grab this as well, hoping to get the, to this in the fall too. This just is a complex and chilling tale of friends, family, and the often murderous secrets that hide in the dark. And this takes place in the fall of 1993. And then we have Immortal Dark. This is a vampire. I think this might be a young adult. And this, is, I believe, is this author's, this author's debut novel. I'm pretty sure. Let me see. Yeah, it doesn't say if this is her debut novel. Yes, a breathless, breathtaking debut. So vampires, this says no soul can enter without an invitation. I really love this cover. And I'm hoping it's good. I am hearing mixed reviews about it, that it's kind of a dra uh, kind of drawn out, I'm assuming I heard, but we'll see. I really love the inside of this too. Love that. That's so cool. So I love me a good vampire book. Hoping this one is a win. And then adding to my Stephen King collection is Revival. This one I just know that it kind of has to do with faith and addiction and fanaticism, fanaticism, fanaticism. Am I saying that right? Probably not, but it says a new minister came to Harlow, Maine when Jamie Morton was a boy doing battle with his toy army men on the front lawn. The young Reverend Charles Jacobs and his beautiful wife brought new life to the local church and captivated their congregation. But with Jamie, he shares a secret obsession, a draw so powerful it would have profound consequences five decades after the shattering tragedy that turned the preacher against God and long after his final scathing sermon. Now Jamie, a nomadic rock guitarist hooked on heroin, meets Charles Jacobs again. And when their bond becomes a past beyond even the devil's devising, Jamie discovers that revival has many meanings. So 
Can't wait to read this one. And then today, so today I went to Barnes & Noble and I picked this one up. This is Graveyard Shift by M. L. Rio. It's a little novella. I've been seeing this all over the place. It says, this place has everything. Rats, fungus, thrills, chills, mysteries, hostile incidents, and M. L. Rio definitely weaves it all together into a short, sweet, okay, maybe not that sweet story. A rad, crisp, creepy read. And that's by Chuck Wendig, who... I really like that author. So very, very interested in seeing what this is about. This, yeah, this was like the buy one, get one half off. So I took advantage of it. <laughs> and then I also picked this up at Barnes & Noble today. It's called Hark the Herald Angels Scream. This is like a collection of short stories, which I normally don't read, but this is like horror Christmas short stories. So I'm definitely going to be reading this during Christmas season because I love to read Christmas romance books. So I would love to read Christmas horror books too. And these are short stories. So hoping I enjoy these. We shall see. But I thought the cover was really cute. And it says on the back, from chain ghosts to blood-soaked Santas, the tradition of Christmas horror stretches from Dickens, A Christmas Carol on up to the controversial Silent Night, Deadly Night, and Gremlins. Hark the Herald Angel Scream dives deep into the dark side of the season with tales of commercialism and desire run amok, of hauntings and ghostly revenge and of pure terror. Christmas, not Halloween, is horror's most fertile realm as seen in the 18 original harrowing and chilling stories collected here. So let me see if I know any of these authors. The only authors that I recognize are Sean and McGuire and Josh Mallerman. I don't know any of these other authors. Oh, it says, and more. I don't know any of these other authors, so we'll see. So now we are getting into sci-fi and fantasy. So in the fall, excuse me, in the winter, I am starting to get that itch to really get into fantasy again. I haven't really been reading as much as I've liked to this year, but in the fall, I just want to cuddle up with some really good fantasy magic systems and just getting lost in different worlds. So some of these, I want to be like a bear and just hibernate and read and eat. <laughs> Not too much, but just read and just be nice, warm, and cuddly in front of a fireplace. That's, that's my goal for the winter. So some of these I have winter plans for. The first up is Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. I read Kindred earlier this year, and it is definitely going to be in my top 10 books, favorite books of 2024. So I can't wait to read more of her books. This one, it just, I don't remember what this is about. It says, a gripping tale of survival and a poignant account of growing up sane in a disintegrating world. A powerful story of hope and faith in the ongoing contest over which dystopian classic, oh, this is a dystopian book, is most applicable to our time. Octa Octavia Butler's parable books may be unmatched. Is this a series? I don't know if this is a series. This might be a series. Let me see. It is a series. The Earthseed books or a duology. I don't know. I don't know, but I can't wait to read it. <laughs> then I also picked up the Belladonna trilogy. I uh, talked about this book, all, these, this trilogy also in my September wrap up. So you can check out that video for my thoughts. Overall, I enjoyed it. I liked the first book the best, second book the second best, and the third book I didn't love. But overall, I think it's a solid series. It's a uh, like fantasy romance series about a young woman who has some powers that she initially is really struggling with and death the grim reaper plays a role in it and it's a fun time it's a fun time um yeah so check out my uh, september video if you want to hear my thoughts belladonna is a perfect fall read too by the way so also on my trip to barnes and noble today i saw dungeon crawler carl by matt Din Dineman. I did not know this was an actual book. I thought it was only on like, I don't know why my brain only thought it was on audiobook, but I've heard lots of great things about this. Actually, I was recently in a stream held by Rekindled Reader, Theo from Rekindled Reader, Reader excuse me, and Fina from Fina Reads. And we talked about this a little bit and they seem to think that I may enjoy it. So I'm very excited to read this. This is like a, what's it called? L LPG? I'm probably screwing that up. LGP? Something with video games. Uh, clearly, I don't play video games, but it sounds like fun. I heard the audiobooks are fantastic, so I'm very excited. I don't know if this is like just one book or if it's 
a group of them all in one, but yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm very, actually very excited to start this. And then I finally picked up The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. I have been wanting to get this book, start this series for so long, but I really didn't want it on mass paperback. <laughs> And the uh, trade paperback finally came out a few months ago, so I had it on pre-order. I cannot wait to read this. I've heard so many things about this fantasy series. It's like a heist, I believe, series of a group of guys that, I don't know, do heists. It sounds fun. I have a feeling I'm actually really going to love this, so I definitely cannot wait to get to this one. And then when I was thinking about fantasy books that I wanted to read this winter, I was really craving some grim, dark fantasy, so I went on the hunt to see what people are calling really good grim, dark fantasy books, and this one came up quite a few times, and this is Between Two Fires by Christopher Buhlman, and all I know Actually, I don't know anything about it. It takes place in the Middle Ages. And I don't know if I bought like the large print. The print in this just looks funny to me. Or it, maybe that's just the way it is because it's um, indie published. But I hope this is brutal and violent. <laughs> that sounds horrible, but I hope it is. I love the Middle Ages. I love any book that is set in the Middle Ages. And I cannot wait to get to this one this winter. And then the last book that I grabbed today from Barnes & Noble and the last book in this haul was a huge happy surprise for me when I saw this on a table that they had out because this book is actually not due to be out until October 22nd. I actually have the arc of it, but there's something about having the actual book in your hands to complete the trilogy that is on your shelf that makes me so happy. And that is The Fury of the Gods by John Gwynn. When I saw this, I had to do a double take because I'm like, wait, I have that on pre-order at Amazon. Is that is that the right book? Or is that is that the third book in the Bloodsworn trilogy? And I'm like, yes, yes it is. Yeah, because today is October 12th, Saturday, October 12th. This is not due to come out until October 22nd. So I grabbed it very quickly. This is the final book in the Bloodsworn Saga by John Gwynn. It is a fantastic fantasy series. It is Norwegian inspired. So much action. I love the magic in it and the creatures in it and the characters. And I cannot wait to see how this series ends. So this was a very pleasant surprise for me today at Barnes & Noble. Okay, so that is all of the books that I've hauled recently. I am so excited, of course, as always, to read all of these books. I'm hoping that I love them, hoping I don't have to unhaul any of them. But uh, as always, thank you so much for stopping by. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books, if you think I should push some of them up higher on my TBR list of books that I want to read this winter. Thank you guys for stopping by and I will see you again soon. See ya!